in the studio with me to talk about that cabinet is uh, CNBC Africa reporter Karabo Letata. Thank you, Se, for coming through. So I want your thoughts overall in terms of the kind of thinking that influenced Cyril Ramaphosa, in your view, as he arrived at the names that he needed here, the kind of themes that drove his selection of those people. A lot of political considerations, I would say. But some had been nuanced, if you will. Uh, one was looking at uh, former ministers like uh, Minister Nkwinti to see if he will be part of this cabinet. He was one of the oldest members of the cabinet from the Jacob Zuma time. We were looking to see what's going to happen with uh, Jeff Khadebe, who's been a minister since democracy. 25 years is quite a long time. Uh, you can it add as well that uh, you wanted to see what he would do with his brother-in-law. Uh, well, I, I would call him minister, uh, of uh, former minister of justice, Minister Jeff <laughs> Khadebe, former <laughs> minister of you know, transport for the Minister of <laughs> Constitutional <laughs> Justice. I mean, you He's can go around. on and on. He has. What Cyril Ramaphosa was able to do really yesterday was skim the top, if you will, the top layer. He reduced ministers to 28 from 36, but he really didn't temper much with the deputies. I mean, they yeah. fell by only three. We are down to 33 deputies from 36. Yeah. That's not exactly a sizable <coughs> chunk. So I think there's a... I don't know, there's a, I feel like it, it was a bittersweet cabinet announcement, like yeah. we, we were all surprised, we got some ministers that we didn't think would return, I mean, yeah. people say what has Gwana Mashaba and Maite done in yeah. her portfolio yeah. over the last yeah. five or ten years, I don't yeah. remember any exciting piece of legislation. And the same can be said for Economic Development Minister, who's now rewarded with another five-year tenure in charge of the Department of Trade and Industry as well, yeah. as it becomes a cluster. Ibrahim Patel, no one can accuse Ibrahim Patel of having the economic nows over the last 10 years that could grow this economy. Yeah, so I was going to say that, of course, ministers serve at the pleasure of the president. He may not make the five years that you're talking about. I also wanted to explore with you, did you get a sense that this cabinet, apart from being political in the sense the president was playing his political game, come on, Patricia DeLille, there was any thought given to the need to try to grow this economy, which of course is the biggest challenge that South Africa is facing. So um, I have a m bit of mixed review after being at the union building yesterday. This was not my feeling, but overnight I woke up uh, yeah. rather changed, if you will. So essentially, by clustering some of um, the other ministries, you have an interesting makeup now. I mean, let's think about it this way. A liberal uh, market economy man like Tito Mboweni, who retains the finance ministry, now has to deal with two communists. Ibrahim Patel, who comes from the South African Communist Party, as well as David Masondo, who comes in as the deputy minister to Tito Mboweni. You so can this also liberal add thinker Pravin is now Godan, who comes from the South African Pravin Communist Godan, Party. Pravin who's also a Communist Party member. So. I think for me, the economic uh, cluster is not well balanced, and I find that, that we are might be in for a lot of butting of heads between what a liberal, you know, free market thinking minister wants on the one hand, Tito Mboweni, versus the communist gang, as it were. Were there any surprises for you? Surprise re still remains Patricia DeLille. For me, the question around, and yeah. I did not ask the SG the right, I did not phrase it well yesterday when I asked him about Patricia DeLille, how she came about. Yeah. What I really should have asked is why? Why is Patricia DeLille, a woman with a party that's what, barely five months old, being rewarded with this position? Mm. Did you I think it's yourself? more than just the, a, you know, Ramaphosa did politics. I think they play to ANC politics as well. I mean, if you ask the DA, they suspect that. So Musi is of the Musi Maimani, the leader of the opposition, is of the opinion that Patricia DeLille is being thanked. The question is, what for, Godfrey? What for? for I Dele say for she did a lot of neutralization in the Western Cape. I, say I think that she did her part there. And I think that if the ANC had scored slightly more than 28% in the yeah. province, yeah. we might have a different kind of setup. I think she could also be being asked here to deliver Western Cape in the next election in 20. 24, <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, that's me. But you should have asked me because I called it. Mm -hmm. I kept asking the question, can we see Cyril being adventurous enough to include members of the opposition in his cabinet? Well, to tell the truth, there's two, right? Like, yeah. let's not forget, there's yes, Bantu Holomisa, yeah. who becomes the Patekile. deputy president Patek of... Particularly. Okay. Particularly Holomisa. Oh, particularly Holomisa, yes. Yeah. Who becomes uh, a, a deputy minister to the justice ministry, as well as... Patricia Deville, but I mean, was it really reaching far enough? Yeah. And there's a notable omission, of course. Oof. The DA did not get a nod with any representation. Maybe the extended government might still feature yeah. some of DA members, but also the EFF will cry foul over the same thing.
Absolutely. Talking about the EFF, did Ramaphosa include Pravin Godan with the cloud <laughs> over his head <laughs> as a political statement and also as a, um, how, do, how do I put it, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a rebuff mm. to those who are sitting on the other side who are saying this man must go? So I think the president was well within his right to yes. exercise this decision, and that's why he did. I think that he's hoping. I think, I think it would be remiss of the president. It would be disingenuous, actually, of the president to say yeah. that he doesn't think that Praveen Gwadan stands a very good chance at getting that adverse finding against him by the public protector being overturned. Otherwise, the president would have not appointed uh, Mr. Praveen Gwadan in that You could have done the same with David Mabuza, just accept him before actually uh, well, getting him clear, get, getting his name cleared. It's from understanding with people in the know that the president mm -hmm. was actually, you know, really desperate for David Mabuza to be sworn in as an MP last week uh, and not delay his swearing in as he did. But he the needs him for his chess pieces. The compromise was yeah. that was that uh, uh, they will only do it once he's presented himself uh, for the in front of the integrity committee. But if you're talking about chess pieces, the real question is whose yeah. chess board are we playing on? David Mabuza's or Cyril Ramaphosa's? And what's your call? What's your call? What's your what's your sense? David Mabuza is a man who, as they say, defeated the son too of chess, Jacob Zuma. Mm. Hmm. He surprised us all in 2017. He continues to surprise and hold the country in suspense now. Yeah. I doubt this is the last we're going to see of David Mabuza. The infusion of uh, young talent, I'm going to call it that, and I am passing no judgment, mm -hmm. and mixing up with the old established um, uh, 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 rear guard. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, Bladen Zimande returning. No. You have uh, Naledi Pando amongst those that are back. Then the ladies, uh, Mr. Sulu, uh, and the others, etc., etc. Do you think the president got it right in terms of balance, right there? <laughs> it depends on how you're looking at the balance. Gender balance? Yeah. Gender we've done well. Got we've done well. He's over. He's uh, at fifty percent, just about. <laughs> um, politically, I don't know. There's an interesting question to be asked. So I'm going to say these questions that are outstanding for me that yeah. I hope I get answers to. The president of the Women's League and the spokesperson of the Women's League are not in cabinet. Yes. That's just the one side. We're going to put Batebile Zamini and Togozile Kasa onto the one side. And then also you have to look at what he's playing at. I mean, the appointment of Ronald Lamola as Minister of Justice. And Ronald Lamola is young, if young is not under 35, but he is very young and you know, he's been much uh, heralded in that position. And for the portfolio but of course, as well. that position is going to be very, um, very much in the news because it oversees the criminal justice system and we are hoping and expecting prosecutions yeah. of those that have stolen money from the state and it, mm -hmm. it becomes politicized. So sure. I hope that he's got the requisite experience, the calm yeah. and yeah. the ability to still seem as a neutral man. You were hard to please, in particular around <laughs> Matamela Cyril Ramaphosa. Well After that cabinet mm -hmm. last night, Okay. Has anything moved on your dial? So here's the thing. One of the other interesting clusters is Mines Ministry coming together with energy. Yeah. So who's among the biggest energy users in South Africa? Mines. They also sell coal to ESCO. So is anybody sense, right? not bothered by that by the closeness of that and the fact that, you know, Mantache has a great mining background as a unionist and all. Yeah. But these two things might not necessarily complement. They might be need to be kept apart so that you and I get the fairest electricity pricing we can get. I told you I thought about it.